let it go 52 times a year The week is done and over with Before you know <laughs> Thank you very much indeed Hello, good evening and welcome I am David Frost and this is That Was The Week That Was. Finally, after 60 years, the third series has finally arrived. After the first two series were cruelly cancelled by the BBC and the then Tory government, our first news story this week is in the sun. My six-foot dog is so big, people think he's a lion. And cross the street to get away from him. Feeding him costs an arm and a leg, said a dog owner this week. The worrying thing is, whose arm and whose leg are we talking about? <laughs> Continuing with the subject of dogs, what is the best treat for your dog? Some experts say courgettes. Yes, if you have a middle class dog, then you need plenty of avocados and courgettes for him. <laughs> the Times revealed this week that the Duke of Windsor reveals the layout of Buckingham Palace to the Nazis before they bombed. We think King Charles has given the layout of Frogmore Cottage to Vladimir Putin for when Andrew moves in. <laughs> Sadly, all UK honey has been tested in an EU fraud investigation and has failed authenticity tests. David Beckham tested his honey, but Posh was found to be only 40%. The Tories are getting tough, and beggars deemed to be causing a nuisance on streets will be targeted as part of Rishi Sunak's crackdown on anti-social behaviour. While silly beggars like Boris, deemed to be causing a nuisance on Number 10 Downey Street, will be given huge sums of money. <laughs> Old stager Dick Van Dyke has his car keys taken away by his concerned wife, Arlene Silver, after his Malibu car wreck that left him bloody. We on TWTWTW are all in agreement Dick should never have left Truly Scrumptious, should he? <laughs> Lovely jubbly, Sir David Jason revealed his surprise and delight after discovering he has a 52-year-old daughter and grandson aged 10. He had no idea existed. David's grandson, Trigger, was reported to be the spitting image of his dad. <laughs> this week, the declassified UK news showed Ukrainian soldiers seen with depleted uranium ammunition in the UK. Yes, there's going to be so much uranium in the Ukraine, it's going to be called Ukrainium, of course. <laughs> Oxfordshire Live reported that Jeremy Clarkson's diddly squat farm shop is to begin selling homegrown pork in its latest venture. So, after delivering homegrown porkies for many years, we're now going to be able to get some pork as well. <laughs> Apparently, in Derbyshire, you can meet a human Easter egg at Crystal Maze Live this April. But, you're warned, he's not a very pleasant character He'll eat all your Easter eggs and beat up the Easter bunny. <laughs> In Scotland, a Glasgow funeral director attacked his wife during a heated row over curtains. The funeral director's wife apparently refused to let go of the curtains as her coffin was sent to the incinerator. <laughs> After years of debauchery, the Dutch are showing a red light in Amsterdam to Britain's stag parties. So, much the same as usual then. <laughs> this week in the Liverpool Echo, neighbours captured the moment when a derelict building collapsed to rubble. So, the Liverpool Echo provided a video which showed that while house prices are falling, so are the houses. <laughs> Madame Two Swords opened a new royal experience starring a redressed King Charles. Some corgis were invited along and shown the whole ball of wax, which they spent several hours chasing around two swords. <laughs> In the newly revamped exhibition, Charles showed little expression on his face. 
So indeed it was all very lifelike. <laughs> the sun gave us the incredible moment when a giant stinky skunk scurried along the pavement in the middle of North London. Wait a minute, news just in. It wasn't a stinky skunk at all, it was Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Eggheads warned this week that the term boffin must be banned as they announced a bin the boffin campaign, which resulted in 334 boffins being put out in the recycling at Cambridge University. <laughs> in an article on plastic grass, the Guardian said, it would survive a nuclear Armageddon should plastic grass be banned. So now you know the safest place to be when the bomb goes off is under the lawn. <laughs> With an added bonus that when the bomb drops, at least we'll have something to lie on. <laughs> we learned this week in The Guardian that removing 70 of Pablo Escobar's hippos is liable to cost Colombia 3.5 million pounds. As we've learned in the UK with the NHS, hippo operations are expensive. <laughs> BBC revealed that a Cornwall man mistakenly ordered 60 pairs of reading glasses. Yes, indeed, he should have gone to Specsavers. 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 At least you'll be able to read the small print in future. <laughs> Down in Devon, we heard that the Royal Navy submarine will cruise around Plymouth Sound this weekend. All the local submarine spotters will be swimming around in their anoraks. <laughs> it will be like train spotting, but wetter. <laughs> Whilst moving down into Cornwall, we learned that Kate Middleton is more adventurous than William, as she ate a Viagra Caribbean delicacy. While William is already a bit too stiff, this sort of thing. <laughs> this week in the United States, the New York Times said, Imagine T-Rex, now imagine it with lips. I am imagining it, the New York Times. Female dinosaurs must have spent a small fortune on lipstick. <laughs> the court case of the week was Gwyneth Paltrow's skiing accident. Observers have said that she was a punching bag as the court case slowly ground up. However, the important question remains, was she a special goop vegan punching bag? <laughs> The Beckhams are rarely out of the news. Victoria Beckham subtly shady claims she doesn't eat when she tucked into a salad wearing dressing gown and heels in an iconic lunch break snap. Victoria feasted on the salad leaf for about an hour before collapsing in a heap with indigestion. <laughs> the male carried pictures of a woman in a hospital bed. She better be calling the baby Greg, said the male, when a new mother was branded an icon for tucking into a vegan sausage roll hours after giving birth. Well, she'll definitely be up for the Daily Mail National Front Working Class Hero Awards, won't she then? <laughs> Guardian revealed abusive working conditions are endemic in Spain's strawberry farm. Which reminds us that the Beatles are re-releasing their famous single, Strawberry Fields for Never. <laughs> this was the week that King Charles started to relax. In the mirror, we learned that he cracked up as he was presented with a crown made from cake ahead of the coronation. Oh, so I'm going to make Harry the Duke of Devon, am I? I'll eat my flaming hat if it actually happens. <laughs> Whilst in the Evening Standard, Nando's showed they were using a robot to make 550 portions of chips an hour. And if you eat away from home, there's a much bigger commercial robot fryer as well. <laughs> it was revealed in the Evening Standard that Stormy Daniels said Donald Trump is no longer untouchable. 
but warned indictment will spark violence. No, not untouchable, but most people wouldn't want to, would they? And be careful to wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. <laughs> Cigar Lady of the Year, Therese Coffey, faced calls to resign following 300,000 sewage spills in rivers, which meant that Britain's rivers are only marginally less polluted than Theresa Coffey's lungs. <laughs> Whilst on France News, we saw the pianist who's been playing for more than 100 years. Colette Mays is about to release her seventh album, 108 Years of Piano. It's a long player and lasts 108 years. <laughs> Returning to the subject of Stormy Daniels, she cancelled Piers Morgan's top TV interview at the last minute, over security issues. That's proving that Piers Morgan can't even get a date with a bloody prostitute. <laughs> a man in the Mail Online said, I have a rare condition that causes my body to produce beer. It cost me my job and home because people thought I was an alcoholic. If he needs a transfusion, he has a pint of Stella. He doesn't give blood at the hospital. He goes down the pub, buys everyone a few beers instead. <laughs> the Guardian informed us that planning applications in England fell to record lows in a housing blow. Therefore, the number of new houses being built has fallen. And the number of new houses being built that have fallen has risen. <laughs> and now some animal news. Green Cross Co for toads crossing roads as a patrol sets out to save them. These patrols come complete with toad ladies carrying lollipops. <laughs> also this week, prison chief Nick said the sun after a governor at a prison and his wife were charged with being paid by crime gangs for secret information. Now everyone knows that the key to the front door of Wormwood Scrubs is hidden under the doormat. <laughs> Tory MP said in the Telegraph, I have a panic button in every room in case China hurts me. Unfortunately, dear, the panic buttons are made in China and don't bloody work. <laughs> Leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, said 99.9% .9 of women don't have a penis. A conclusion he made crawling around under the Labour front bed. <laughs> if you were watching TV this week, you would have seen on the latest episode of Wild Isles a carnivorous giant leech swallowing a toadlet. So, close your eyes and imagine. It's a bit like King Charles swallowing Prince Andrew. <laughs> Our final visit to Stormy Daniels this week, she said how a porn star from a poor town in Louisiana is set to change American politics forever, which explains why the 2024 campaign theme song will be Bruce Springsteen's Porn in the USA. <laughs> Boris Johnson's father was branded a state dupe over a film with China's state broadcaster. Stanley Johnson, 82, will retrace the Silk Road journey made by 13th century merchant Marco Polo. What did you expect? Public schoolboys always enjoy a bit of polo, don't they? <laughs> the Liverpool Echo said... I ate at Johnny Vegas' favourite cafe and the toast was thicker than the plate. But not quite as thick as Johnny Vegas, was it? <laughs>
it's over, let it go. 52 times a year, the week is done and over with before you know. 